the Mastin run on food of Canton in the International Air Race, Jimmy Allen and Steve Robertson arrive over their destination to find the city and airport hidden by an impenetrable fog. The intrepid Jimmy dives into the mist with his parachute, discovers the field, and by means of a signaling pistol, guides the veteran speed to it. The great ace steals his way down through the dense vapor and makes a skillful landing. We now find the two pilots standing on the edge of the field shortly after they've landed. The swirling wet clouds still blanket the airport like a tremendous shroud. Isn't this fog terrible? There doesn't seem to be any sign of a letter. Oh, it's as bad as I've ever seen, Jim. Look out there. You can just see the faint outline of our ship. And it can't be over 30 feet from us. Well, when they get fogs in this part of China, they certainly don't fool around about it. Oh, gee, see, just think. We're the only ship in. Yes, sir, my boy. And every second the clock ticks off, increases our lead. Oh, boy, this is great. It's just wonderful. Oh, we're bound to jump into the lead because we've already been on the ground over eight minutes. Yeah, a little over eight. And that's just the margin the Russian had on us. From now on, kid, we're piling up a lead. A lead which may decide this race. Gosh, that's swell. You sure had those port pilots built right. The first time we run into bad weather, they get lost. I'm beginning to get a little worried, though, Jim. If those fellas tried to fly through this fog or under it, they may have, well, they might have gotten into serious trouble. You think they may have cracked up? Well, it's entirely possible. A man has to be a mighty lucky man. he have had a lot of experience in thick weather flying to go through this stuff. Hey, wait a minute. Look there. The fog's beginning to lift. Why, George, it is. You can see our ship plainly now. Yes, it's looking all right. Must be a hundred foot ceiling. If it clears all over this area, they'll be all right. In the meantime, we've gained a big lead. Break it late. That's all the tough luck we've had. You know, I sometimes wonder if... Wait a minute. Wait. There's a ship. Is it? Yeah. I sure do. The ship all right. Let's listen. My golly, that sounds like your eyes. <laughs> you have a good ear for engines, kid. It does sound like this. How about that? Those European engines have a peculiar sort of throb. I'm sure it's the rock ship. He's been attracted by the rockets. They're shooting up through the fog. Fair enough. He's done the smart thing. He's undoubtedly been cruising around in this vicinity, knowing that down here somewhere is the city. Sure. And then he spotted these rockets, so he made right for them. Oh, the fog will lift a little more. He should be able to get down. Uh-oh. I don't hear it anymore. He's caught his engine. He's coming in the land. That's what it is. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, I think he can make it, too. The fog's clearing rapidly. Looks to me as if there was at least 200 foot ceiling now. Well, that's enough to get down safely. Now, if we can only hit the field. Oh, I think it'll be all right. As I recall, there are no high obstructions around the field. There's certainly plenty big. And he still has his engine. In case he comes down through and misses it, he can pull up again and take another shot. He's going to rock a pretty cagey pilot. I have more confidence in him and Smith Fellows than I do in that Russian. I agree with you, Steve. The Russian's a good pilot, but careless. We found that out. A good pilot is never careless, Jim. What you meant to say was that he's a natural born pilot. But too careless and reckless for airline work. Yeah, that's what I really meant. And there's another thing I... Look, Steve. There comes a ship down through the fog. All right, Harry, that's it, all right. And it's the rock. He's definitely rough and swinging fast. So I'll be careful now. Steady. He's all right. Very down. Good landing. Nice work, the rock. Well, that's one ship accounted for. Oh, boy, I'm sure glad to see him. Now, if this fog will only clear, and the other two come in, we'll be all set. With the golden dragon in the lead. Boy, oh, boy, what a feeling. Say, do you realize, Steve, that this is the first time we've been in the lead since we left Pai King? Yeah, that's right. That seems ages ago. It sure does. Well, here comes Jerome. Let's see what he has to report. Say, he must have been plenty worried. I don't see that grin in his face. I'll bet he was worried. He had a chance to get a big lead on it. And say, I'll bet he was surprised to see our ship standing on the line. Yeah, when he saw that, he probably lost his grin. He sure isn't wasting any time getting out of that ship. Cut his switches without even letting the engines cool off. Hi there, Jerome. Boy, we're sure glad you got down okay. Well, what do you think of this weather, Jerome? Oh, such fog. Bonjour, monsieur. I never see such fog before. I tried the English Channel many times and never see such fog. Good, monsieur. How come you come down through, huh? I'm amazed to see American planes already here. <laughs> <laughs> we just had a bit more luck than you, Jerome. We've been on the ground now for about 15 minutes. Oh, you came through. Uh, as we say in France... With the headlong speed, huh? Well, we didn't waste much time getting down. But how did you find the field? Did those rockets help you? We, oui, the rockets saved my life. I came over past. There is no radio to bring me here. I mean, a great mix-up. All I can see is fog. Everywhere I looked, there is no thing but fog. So you began to circle around, eh? Oh, we. Oui. 
I make the big circle. I know somewhere below me is the city. So I make the big circle open the fog go away. Well, that was a smart thing to do, all right. It's a tough spot to be in. Over a strange country without a radio to guide you. Oh, and now I know. That is true. And then what happened? Did you see one of the rockets? Wee, wee. Suddenly, off to my right, a rocket come up and stopped. Ah, uh, that was a great sight to me. I got a retreat to Libon Dieu, and I rushed my plane in the direction of that signal. I know just how you feel, Jerome. Oh, such a feeling of relief. Oh, my. You do not know how good it makes me feel. Then did you see another rocket? They were sending them up every 30 seconds. Ah, we. Oui. As I fly in that direction, another rocket come up to tell me where I am. So, I think to myself, aha, down below is the field. So, I pull back my throttles and flip back to land. And you did a good job of it, too. An excellent job. You gauged your glide exactly right. It couldn't have been better. The visibility had been unlimited. Oh, no, see, uh, thank you. I tell you what the first bomb What a flyer. Listen, there's another ship. And there's the sun, going through the mist. The fog's cleared, fellas. I hear plan, but I do not see it yet. Right around here somewhere. Well, he's safe enough now. There it is. Off to the east. Say, he was way off his course. Yeah, I see it. We, we, the black plane, the Russian. Yeah, it's Ivan. There he turned. He's part of the field. Fair enough. That leaves just one on the Oh, the fine English man. I hope nothing has happened to him. We all hope that. Well, Ivan sees the finish line. We're coming down in a dive across it. And boy, look at that ship come. Let's see now, Jimmy. Yeah, we've got nearly 18 minutes. 18 minutes behind us. Say, that's a tough lead to overcome. We'll see around. Now, 18 minutes behind you? No, no. <laughs> he can never overcome such a lead. I think the American plan win this race now. Boy, oh boy, I hope so. We're up to win it. Any pilot who can land in a fog like this should win it. Say, <laughs> now, say, wait. Don't you fellas be so previous. This race isn't over yet. We have that long hop to Nanking ahead of us. The longest lap of the whole race. But many things can happen between here and Nanking. Wait, that is true. I wonder what's happened to Smith, fellow. Sky's clear now, and there's not a sign of another ship. I'm George Kitty, maybe in trouble. Well, if we don't hear something from him soon, we'll have to start a search. Steve, that's the only thing that... Well, I'll be hanged. Hey, Steve. Look over there toward the passenger station. What do you mean, Tim? Oh, I see. Yeah, that girl over there. Doesn't she look familiar? That girl standing there with a man in uniform. Hey. Why, George, you know her, Jim. And that fellow with her. Well, he's an American naval officer. Say, I know who she is. Well, what in the world is she doing down here in Canton? Well, well who is she, Jimmy? I, I seem to know her, but I can't place her. Why, you remember, she's a good friend of Barbara. Don't you remember? She's the girl you took out to dinner one night, and then we went dancing afterwards. You know, Barbara introduced us to her. Oh, oh, sure, sure, of course. Mighty charming girl, too. Let's see now, uh, what was her name? Uh, uh, Duncan. Yeah, Patricia Duncan. She's an American who came over here with her father. Sure, that's her name. Patricia Duncan. Yeah, that's right. Her father came over here on business, and she accompanied him. Mighty charming girl. Well, what's she doing down here? Yeah, that's funny. She left her in Shanghai just before the race started, and she expected to sail in a few days for Japan. Yeah. Yeah, I remember her talking about that with her. Well, if she was sailing for Japan, she certainly was Japan. She certainly wouldn't be down here in Canton. Hey, let's go over and say hello to her. Yeah, I'll be glad to see her again. Oh, uh, can you pardon us, Jerome? No, we must be speed. I retire in favor of the new people the <laughs> Okay, Jerome. We'll see you later. Hey, Jimmy. I wonder who the naval officer is. Must be one of the boys on the east in the Asiatic fleet. Or maybe one of the officers in the river patrol. This sure is a surprise. Oh, she's looking this way now. She sees it. Hi there! How are you? Thank you, Jim. It was the surprise that we were. Uh-oh. Hey, that's funny. Where's she going? Why, look, Pete. She's turned around and started into the station. And I'll be hanged. Hey, that is funny. Hey there, Miss Duncan. We want to see you. Well, can you beat that? She looked right at us and didn't even speak. It looks to me like that naval officer pulled her inside the station. 
morning. Let's go to see what this is all about. All right, go ahead. I can't figure this thing out at all, the way that... Jimmy, they're gone. They're not here. Well, what is this, anyway? They just came through that door a second ago. Well, they're not inside. You can see for yourself. They just disappeared. Hey, Jim. Looks to me like she's trying to avoid us. Well, I'll be hanged. Hey, Steve. What's this all about, anyway? The boys, by their skill and daring, have jumped into the lead in the great race. But why is the American girl, Miss Duncombe, acting in such a mysterious manner? Is she trying to avoid meeting Jimmy and Steve? Let's see what develops in the next air adventure. has come to you through the facilities of the world broadcasting system.